Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and I'm the founder of Developer2Architect.com. In today's lesson number 114, we'll take a look at the difference between microservices and service-based architecture. These are two different architecture styles, although they quite frequently get confused. And what I'd like to address in this video are really those differences between these two different architecture styles. When we talk about microservices, what we're really talking about are single purpose functions deployed as separate units of software where each service owns its own data. But if we take a look at service-based architecture, it looks like microservices, but the core difference is that we have well-defined application domains that are deployed as separate units of software. And what we're really talking about here is the overall service granularity. Within service-based architecture, we typically have very coarse-grained services. The service itself contains all of the domain functionality, for example, all of customer functionality. Whereas with microservices, we typically split up services within a domain into subdomains and sometimes even further than that. You know, the other core difference is that with microservices, we form strict bounded contexts between the service and the data it owns, therefore requiring us to break apart our database. However, with service-based architecture, we can share data as well as share code. And this is one of the core differences between microservices and service-based architecture. Now, it's interesting, the reason why we don't have to break apart the database is based on the sheer number of services. You see, with microservices, we have dozens, hundreds, to even thousands of services within an application context. But within service-based architectures, we try to limit that to four to 12 services. And because we're limiting it to 12, we can manage that change control, connections, and scalability that plagues us within microservices because of the number of services we have. Now, microservices also, because of the number of services, does require us to embrace DevOps as well as operational automation. And this is because, quite simply, it's not feasible for us humans to manage the parallel testing, deployment, and monitoring of several hundred to even several thousand services. We require that automation as well as that containerization. However, with service-based architecture, we don't. As a matter of fact, we can use the same environment that our monolithic application was in, or it currently is existing in. Uh, one last structural difference here is that with microservices, this usually requires organizational change into cross-functional teams with specialization, uh, where testers, uh, DBAs, are all on our same virtual team, usually aligned by domain. But service-based architecture works fine with Conway's law. In other words, we don't need to reorganize our teams in order to embrace this architecture style. So these are some of the core structural differences. But I want to talk about another difference as well, and that's with the operational characteristics between these. In our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, we talk in depth about each of these architecture styles and correspondingly have star ratings. As a matter of fact, if we flip the page, uh, we see that we have star ratings for both microservices on the left and service-based architecture on the right on chapter 13. If we extract these out of the book, uh, let's take a look at the core differences between these star ratings. Now, one star means it's not very well supported. Five stars means that it's excellent. It's a well supported feature within this architecture. If we look at our first difference, we notice that there's a significant difference in elasticity. Now, elasticity is where we have a sudden spike in user load or requests, such as maybe a concert ticketing system when a, when a new concert is announced, or an auction bidding system when it gets towards the end of that auction and everybody's bidding like crazy. Um, things spike up. And with microservices, this is rated five stars, which is the highest because of the fine-grained nature of the services. 
However, with service-based architecture, we have more coarse-grained services, and this has to do with a metric called MTTS, mean time to start, which means if I need a new service instance to respond immediately, how long does it take that service instance to start up? In microservices, well, we typically have startup times in the matter of maybe 100 or so milliseconds. It's within hundreds of milliseconds, whereas in service-based, it's typically measured in seconds, which would be thousands of milliseconds. Uh, the next difference that you see is with the evolutionary aspect of our architecture. Uh, within microservices, in order to evolve this architecture, um, in many cases, it's a matter of simply adding more separately deployed services, whether they're containerized or whether they're in serverless functions. However, with service-based architecture, unfortunately, because the entire domain is within a single deployment unit, it becomes more difficult to actually expand or evolve the architecture, although it's much better than a monolith because we can expand a particular domain uh, without impacting other domains. Uh, modularity loses a star within service-based architecture really because of that coarse-grained nature of the service. It's still a distributed architecture, and it still has level of architectural modularity, but not at the function level. So that's why that loses a star. Now, another significant difference comes in with overall cost, and look at the difference here, everyone. We're talking about one star in microservices, which doesn't mean the cost is low. It means the overall cost is bad. <laughs> Whereas in service-based, we get four stars, which means it's pretty good. And microservices is a very expensive architecture, not only to develop or migrate to, but also to maintain. A lot of that cost does come from the migration effort of breaking apart databases, reorganizing our team structures within companies, also embracing DevOps, the operational automation, and the licensing that comes along with that. But in service-based architecture, we don't have those costs. And consequently, it becomes a fairly inexpensive architecture, not only to migrate to, but also to maintain. Now, performance is also a difference that you see here, uh, that service-based architecture does, in fact, have generally better performance than microservices. And this is because the communication between functionality within a domain in service-based architecture is all within a single service. Within microservices, we generally break that domain functionality out into separate services. And when those services communicate with one another, we incur a cost in terms of performance, and that's due to network latency, security latency, and also data latency. And now the other impact that we see is also in difference is with scalability. And we lose two stars within service-based because of the coarse-grained nature of a domain service. When we scale out any particular domain, we are scaling all of that domain functionality, and we may not need to. And with microservices, we can scale at a function level. As a matter of fact, microservices does have the highest level of scalability because of that fine-grained nature of those services. Uh, the last thing we see here is simplicity. Uh, microservices is hard. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it's the hardest thing I've done in my career of 36 years. Um, it's difficult in terms of breaking apart databases, the choice about service granularity, workflows, transactions, uh, code reuse. There's a lot of decision-making processes. It's a hard architecture to get right. But with service-based architecture, it's really breaking apart identifying domains and breaking apart those domains. And we can kind of see analyzing these different star ratings as well, really gain an appreciation of the differences, and not only between these different architecture styles, but actually when to use them and embrace them as well. So for more information, you can go to my website, developer2architect.com. Lots of great resources there, including where these lessons are in Software Architecture Monday. This is lesson 114, microservices versus service-based architecture, which means there's 113 other lessons out there for you to see if you're first viewing Software Architecture Monday. So I hope this lesson has given you some insight into learning about some of the structural and operational differences between microservices and service-based architecture. 
Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned in two weeks for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.